So I'm reading a book by Isabel Wilkerson called Cast, The Origins of Our Discontents. And I highly recommend it uh, to anyone who's interested in learning about how it is that America uh, became so impacted by its racial problems and how those racial problems uh, became so ingrained in the fabric of this country. I haven't finished it, it yet, but as I'm reading it and learning more about the problems of what the author calls the American caste system, I can't help but see why it is that regardless of the many attempts uh, at equality in this country, the problems of race in America simply will not go away. You see, in, in any caste system, as she describes, you have a hierarchy that includes the dominant caste at the top, the subordinate caste at the bottom, and any number of caste levels in the middle. Uh, in the popular caste system in India, you have the dominant caste, which is made up of the Brahmin, and you have the lowest or subordinate caste, which is made up of the Dalit, or uh, what they're famously known as the untouchables. Now, even though we don't think of America as having a caste system or a caste problem, the author correctly points out that there has been one uh, since the earliest days of colonizing this land. And in that caste system, the dominant caste has always been made up of whites, the subordinate caste has been made up of blacks, and other races and ethnicities have made up the middle uh, caste levels. The reason caste uh, exists is because um, in order to develop a nation, you need a segment of the population who is going to be responsible for the meanest sorts of manual labor that will help that nation grow and thrive. This is clearly seen in the caste systems uh, here in America. Uh, it's seen in the caste systems of, in India. And it's also seen in the short-lived caste system uh, that the Nazis established that forced subordinated Jews to work in factories and ghettos to produce things that they needed. So when caste systems are developed, they have to come up with some sort of rationale that determines what caste a person is in. This has been the family that one is born into, the color of one's skin, uh, one's ethnicity, or any number of things. It, it doesn't really matter what the justification is. It could be because you have blue eyes or brown eyes, uh, as was seen in the famous test by Jane Elliott. All that needs to happen is for the dominant caste to decide what makes them dominant and what makes the subordinate caste subordinate. Uh, and from there, you'll get people willing to treat some people as worthy based off of your decision or others as unworthy. For example, in the Indian caste system, members of the lowest caste are prohibited from letting their shadows touch the area an upper caste Brahmin is walking past, lest their very shadows pollute the dominant caste member. Isn't that ridiculous? In America, there's things that are equally ridiculous. Uh, lower caste blacks were taught to call white sir or ma'am, to not make eye contact, and to accept being called boy or other disrespectful and dehumanizing terms. So one can easily see how such a system could lead someone in the lower caste to have one goal, that is to be a member of the upper caste or to be regarded as part of the dominant caste. That way they can simply be treated as a human being. And herein lies the dilemma uh, when it comes to solving the problems of race that have been generated by a caste structure. If we, if we seek to solve the problems of race from within a caste structure, the only valid solution would be to treat subordinate caste members like you treat the dominant caste members. Now, you hear this uh, suggestion whenever people say something like, well, if you only treated all people of color the way you treat white people, the world would be a better place. Now look, this seems like a good solution and it may end some uh, suffering on some level, but it doesn't solve the main problem that created the mistreatment in the first place. In fact, it only reinforces the original problem. You see, suggesting that the solution is to treat people of color the way whites are treated only reinforces the idea that there's, there actually is something inherently better about whites that caused them to receive preferential treatment in the first place. It doesn't attack the lies that established the supremacy of the dominant caste. So what ends up happening uh, when a caste decides to treat all members of the caste the way the dominant caste is treated is that it solidifies the dominant caste in their dominance at the top and sends members of the subordinate caste on an impossible journey 
of acceptance and equality. Nothing exemplifies this impossible pursuit more than the oft-repeated uh, quote among black people, we have to work twice as hard to get half as much. This approach has also negatively impacted the economy of the subordinate cast members. For example, it was black restaurants that suffered when blacks were now allowed to eat in white restaurants. It was, black owned, it was the black owned Negro leagues that suffered and eventually died when black players were allowed in the major leagues, even though in many cases, the talent in the Negro leagues was superior to the talent in the major leagues. See, it only gives the illusion of equality when in reality, it's really establishing the dominance of the higher caste. And this is the only thing that can happen if you try to solve the problem of, with a, of, of race from within a caste structure. It can't solve the problem, it only reinforces it. So how do we solve the problem? Well, the answer is by stepping outside of the ideas of the caste system altogether. This means dominant and subordinate caste members will have to relinquish all the lies told to them about what determines their worth or their, their lack of worth. And they'll need to embrace a new system that evaluates based off of what is true. To be very clear, it means dominant cast members will have to say, no, my skin color, my family, my economic status, my surname, none of those things make me better than other people. And I do not want to live within a system that rewards me because of these things. But could this happen? I mean, why would someone in the dominant caste that's benefiting from all the advantages uh, that they're afforded give up those advantages for a different way of being valued? I think that's a good question. The answer is the only way that a person would abandon those privileges is if they value living according to the truth rather than having your worth be established on, on a lie, especially if what is true ends up meaning a life that is richer than the life that one currently has that's established on the lie. This is why I believe that the problems of race will only be solved as people catch a glimpse of what their lives could be in the kingdom of God. Because it's only then that a dominant cast member can forsake the lies about what makes them worthy, and a subordinate cast member won't seek to find their worth by becoming like the dominant cast, and instead both can pursue a life that's founded on the truth of who they are in the eyes of the God that created them. Now, I know I've lost many of the pagans at this point of the video, if you even made it this far, but this was once the case. History shows that Jesus of Nazareth began a movement that saw hundreds of thousands forsake their first century caste identification and begin to live in the system Jesus unfolded, known as the kingdom of God. Of this system, Paul wrote, here is not Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and in all. Now, if you're aware of how bitter the relationships were between Jews and Gentiles, you'll realize how radical of a statement Paul just made. But it happened because they saw a better vision of their lives in the kingdom of God, which led them to abandon what they were based on the world system and embrace who they were in God's system. And the same can be true today, I think. But it's going to require us, especially the church, especially disciples, to stop trying to fight for equality from within the earthly caste systems and instead move fully into the kingdom of God and live from there and invite other people to find their lives in the kingdom of God. Well, I guess that's enough for now. I could talk about this book all day, but look, I, I highly re recommend you to read this book, Cast by Isabel Wilkerson. Read it in your book clubs, read it alone, listen to the audible version. It's a really good and informative book that I think everybody should read. Uh, it should be read widely. And while you're at it, read the New Testament to learn more about the kingdom that Jesus came to open up for anyone that wants to live a life that's founded on the truth rather than a life that, that's built upon a foundation of lies. Well, hey, thanks for watching, guys. Peace.